Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to bring you a hot topic, informative video on the Wuhan coronavirus that began emerging in late December 2019. This video will focus on the virology of the virus, including the family it is a part of, what it consists of, and how it infects cells to the best of current scientific knowledge. If you enjoy the content of this video, I ask that you please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss out on one of my new videos. This video was also a suggestion from a subscriber, so please keep those comments coming. Okay, let's get started with this video. The Wuhan coronavirus is a novel coronavirus which transferred to humans in late December 2019. The Wuhan coronavirus has been named such as there seems to be some association with the first cases of patients and the Huanan seafood market or the surrounding area in Wuhan, China. This virus causes viral pneumonia with the most prominent symptoms being cough, fever, and difficulty breathing. The radiographs of most patients with the virus show invasive lesions in both lungs. However, the symptoms can vary from mild to severe, with some patients being asymptomatic. The incubation period of the virus can last anywhere from 2 to 14 days, according to the CDC, which is basing this off the MERS virus. The Wuhan coronavirus was previously being referred to as 2019 NCoV. However, more recently, it is now being referred to as COVID-19. This virus is part of the family Coronaviridae. The Coronaviridae family of viruses are normally seen in birds, bats, camels, mask palm civets, mice, dogs, and cats. Normally, these viruses are kept within the avian or mammalian species it infects. However, occasionally a spillover event occurs and the virus is transferable to humans. There are several coronaviruses seen in the human population. However, most are either mild or asymptomatic. There are a few exceptions to this. The exceptions include SARS, which is short for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which was identified in November 2002 in Guangdong, China. SARS causes severe respiratory illness and during the 2002 to 2003 outbreak infected over 8,000 people, causing 774 deaths. MERS, short for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, also falls into this category and was identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. The symptoms of MERS cover a full spectrum of cases from severe disease to mild to asymptomatic. Symptoms can include fever, runny nose, cough, with the common factor amongst these being viral pneumonia. This leads us to our new novel finding of the Wuhan coronavirus, COVID-19. COVID-19 has been identified to be in the same family, coronaviridae, as both SARS and MERS. We are still discovering new properties of this novel virus, but let's go ahead and take a look at what we do know. The coronaviridae family of viruses are enveloped, single-stranded, positive-sense RNA viruses. They are subdivided into four groups, alpha, beta, gamma, and Delta, of which SARS, MERS, and COVID-19 all fall into the beta group. They contain very large genomes for an RNA virus, approximately 30 kilobases. Coronaviridae's virion structure is spherical with diameters about 125 nanometers. The club-like projections that protrude from the surface give these viruses a solar corona appearance leading to the name coronavirus. These viruses contain an envelope with a nucleocapsid inside. The nucleocapsid for these viruses are symmetrical, which is uncharacteristic of positive sense strand RNA virus, however, a common feature for negative sense strand RNA viruses. There are four main structural proteins found in these viruses, encoded for on the three prime end of their genome. They include the spike protein, denoted as S, membrane protein, M, 
envelope, E, and the nucleocapsid, N. Inside the nucleocapsid is where you would find the protected genome of the virus. Seen here are recent images created by the CDC which show the outward appearance of COVID-19. This is what the virus would look like when viewed with an electron microscope. On the right hand side, the picture is clearly labeled so that you can see the external proteins, the E protein, the S protein, and the M protein. For a coronavirus to enter into a cell, it requires the S protein to come into contact with its receptor. The S protein receptor binding is a key component in the ability of the coronavirus to infect a host, and it also determines what cell type or types it can infect. Once bound to its receptor, the virus must gain access into the cell cytosol. This occurs through a series of cleavages of the S protein, which allows the virus and cellular membrane to fuse. Following this fusion, the viral genome is released into the cell cytoplasm. Once the viral genome has entered into the cytoplasm, the next step is for the replicase gene to be translated from the genome. Once this gene is translated, many cleavages occur that result in the formation of the replicase transcriptase complex, or RTC for short. This complex is responsible for RNA replication and transcription. After replication and transcription of the viral particles occurs, assembly and release can follow. The M protein is responsible for directing most of the protein-protein interaction in the virus construction. It has been suggested that the M protein, together with the E protein, are responsible for producing the coronavirus envelopes. Once the virions have finished assembly, they are transported to the cell surface in vesicles and released by exocytosis. It has been suggested that the E protein is not only involved in viral assembly, but also in viral release. So what receptor is COVID-19 using to infect cells? Recently, it has been shown that COVID-19 is using ACE2 receptors to attach to and infect primary host cells. Since COVID-19 seems to use ACE2 receptors to enter into the host cells, it is of interest to know which cells contain these receptors. Knowing where these receptors are expressed and distributed would give some insight into the infection routes of the virus. There are several locations where ACE2 receptors are highly expressed. These include type 2 alveolar cells found in the lungs, both upper and stratified cells in the esophagus, absorptive enterocytes found in the ileum and colon, cholangiocytes that are found in the bile duct, myocardial cells, kidney proximal tubule cells, and bladder and urothelial cells. In addition, Zhu et al. just recently discovered that ACE2 is expressed in the oral cavity epithelial cells with higher expression in the tongue than buccal and gingival tissues. This marks all of these as possible entry routes for the virus and also possible routes for the viral to replicate and cause disease. The best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is to make sure your hands are washed, avoid touching your face, and avoid contact with others that may be sick. Also, if you are sick, stay home. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw that tissue in the trash and wash your hands. Be sure to clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. Those who are more at risk include immune compromised, older adults, and those who may have underlying health conditions such as diabetes, heart, or lung disease. All of the processes that I have talked about in this video have been simplified and are much more complex involving various other steps. If you would like to read more about it, please see the papers listed in my bibliography. I am also going to put a link in the description section of this video that links to my blog in which I have written this out in a little more detail and have also included the bibliography from which this information has come. I know that things are ever changing and hopefully soon we will get more information on this virus as more and more studies get published.